Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Now I've had the Pioneer Nexus 2 kit on review for a couple of weeks, been taking it out to gigs and so on, and what I've realized is I can't really do the whole system in one video. So we're gonna break it down into two. This week focusing on the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2, next week onto the mixer, the DJM 900 Nexus 2, and then talking about you know the system as a whole. Let's get busy. I've approached this review from two different perspectives really. On the one hand, I'm a big fan of the previous generation of Nexus gear. For around 18 months now, the CDJ2000 Nexus has been my player of choice, using SD cards or USB sticks, so I'm predisposed to like this new stuff. But, on the other hand, if Pioneer DJ have their way, this would be the industry standard setup in every club on the planet. And it's also very expensive, although not much more than the old stuff. So I have a duty to really nitpick even the smallest details. If this is going to be the default club gear moving forward, it must be held to the very highest standards. At first glance, there isn't a huge difference from the previous generation in terms of design and layout, and that's a good thing. Any DJ who's used Pioneer kit over the past decade will feel immediately at home on the Nexus 2s. Both the mixer and CDJs are heavier than their predecessors with a more sturdy feel all round. The jog wheels are a bit more shiny on the Nexus 2s and consequently a little bit more slippery. It's only a small amount of difference but noticeable and for me the slightly grippier Nexus 1 jogs win out. One legacy feature many were surprised to see is the CD drive. I was surprised too, but it does make sense to keep it around on players which are destined to be installed in clubs, where a DJ could turn up with all sorts of media. The CDJs have gained a little size as well as weight, mostly due to the larger screen, and that screen really is a huge upgrade. Bigger, higher resolution and touch enabled. That means benefits like QWERTY searching, more on that later, more tracks on the screen when browsing, and full colour waveforms. The waveforms are nice and detailed, although I don't really understand why they've got this kind of white haze around them. That wasn't the case on the recent XDJ700 or 1000 players, and those look much cleaner. I also found the playhead on the overview waveform a little bit harder to discern compared to the older players too. It's just not as obvious. You've got a beat jump option on the players now, but it's locked to one beat only. It's cool for getting you out of trouble, but kind of limited, and I'd like to see the ability to change the jump amount for creative uses. I do really like the new phase meter display. It's a lot like having stacked waveforms on the players themselves in many respects. Really nice. The touchscreen is well implemented here because it's purely complementary to the hardware controls. No buttons are missing compared to the original Nexus. And they've even improved some details like illuminating the memory point buttons. Very cool in the dark. The instant four beat loop button has returned from the first CDJ2000. You had to hold it down on the Nexus. Now holding it down does an eight beat loop and if you want to access loop mode generally, that's done via the screen. I do wish the loop length display covered up the overview waveform, not the main one as it did on the Nexus One. When I'm looping, I want to see precisely where I am in the track. They've now labeled the sync button to make it clear you can do instant doubles with it. You could already do it on the Nexus One, but it's better signposted here. Obviously, the hot cue buttons are a huge improvement over the Nexus One. They retain the clicky feel of the earlier ones, but they're much bigger, have customizable color illumination, and there are two banks of four, making eight in total. That's all good, but the real killer feature is that they now really are hot cues. You just hit an empty one to add a cue point, and deleting is a shift function. That's much more like what software users will be familiar with and makes setting cues far less laborious. I don't actually see any reason why that functionality can't be added to the Nexus One as an option, and I'll be a bit annoyed if it isn't. So what does the touchscreen bring to the table? Well, you've got the shortcut screen, which lets you change some settings on the fly, including the quantize value, which was previously locked to one beat. It's great to have more options. I'd quite like to see separate quantizing of loops and hot cues though. Often I'll turn it off to get busy on the cues, then forget to turn it back on and end up with a messed up loop a few minutes later. But that might just be me. You've also got the track filter screen, which is incredibly powerful. I think a lot of DJs don't realize that the library management in Rekordbox really is on a whole different level compared to Serato DJ and Traktor. And with this screen, you can really take advantage of that on the players themselves. You can filter lists by color, BPM, key, rating, and most importantly, your own tags, which you apply in the software. I only just started to get my head around this in the time I had the players, so we'll be diving back into it for a tutorial later this year. It's the one feature I'll really miss going back to the Nexus Ones now. The QWERTY search is obviously way better than the touch strip found on the previous gen, although it does highlight one limitation of the CDJs. Searching on there is always reliant on full phrases, not keywords. So if I type in Chris, 
the first result is this dope UK garage mix of fine china. But if I type in Chris fine, nothing. I'd like to see that functionality improved. It's just not intuitive and not the way the record box software behaves. Speaking of software, one new feature I love is the ability to hook your laptop into the Pro DJ Link network by plugging it into one of the players via USB. Many recent laptops, in particular Macs, don't have an Ethernet port anymore, so it saves using a dongle. It also means installers can hide the network switch safely away and DJs can just hook into the back of a single CDJ. This is a much slicker experience all round. One big piece of news with the launch of the Nexus 2 was the ability to connect a DDJ SP1 into the players via USB for more control. Good news and bad news there. It works really well, giving you plug and play control of cues, loops and more with a great controller. The bad news is that the deck assignment is currently designed around Serato DJ. So deck two on the left of the mixer is on the right of the SP1 and deck three on the right of the mixer is on the left of the SP1. Unless you only use channels one and four, it will always be ass backwards in some way. So that urgently needs fixing with a firmware update before I can really recommend that setup. It's super cool that the CDJ2000 Nexus 2s now support FLAC and Apple lossless, bringing compressed lossless audio to CDJs at last. Yes, it's about damn time and great to see, but this means for the first time there's true fragmentation in the CDJ ecosystem. I can have tracks with eight cue points on my USB stick, put that in a first generation CDJ900 and they're going to play. I just won't have the cues to use. FLAC files, however, will not play. I understand the need to add it, but if it was on the roadmap for these, it should have been on the XDJ700, the RX and the 1000, all released in the past 18 months. As it stands on Pioneer's usual release schedule, it's gonna be a long time before any lower end hardware supports those formats. So unless you're a high flyer who is guaranteed to have Nexus 2s at every gig, you'd be insane to use those formats right now. I really believe they should have started this change a bit sooner. Another step in the right direction though is with the audio quality. Whilst the original Nexus was no slouch in that regard already, Pioneer DJ have upped the specs of the audio interface further still, and they do sound great when using them as aggregate devices with HID mode. Speaking of which, I still find HID mode somewhat underwhelming, as I always have. It seems crazy that the internal processing and HID are so far removed from each other, so when you hook into Rekordbox DJ as performance software, you lose some features from the players, and although being able to hook one USB into the mixer and use Link for the rest now is way better, what would make even more sense to me would be a real combo of the two, the players having full control and display, while the processing of the audio, the heavy lifting, is done by the PC. That's even more pertinent when looking at the speed of the Nexus 2s. There's no question, when you load a track which contains multiple hot cues, the loading time is slower than the Nexus 1s. Now, I understand the player now has to load eight hot cues, not three, and the color waveforms and all of that, there's a lot more involved. But the fact is, it is slow. And if you're an open format DJ who plays a track every 90 seconds, waiting so long for a track to load is painful. They made improvements to the loading speed with the last firmware update, so all I can do is hope there's more yet to be done there. One final point on HID, at the time of this review, there's no support for Traktor or Serato DJ. If these are to be the new standard to replace the Nexus One, that's got to change sooner rather than later. I'm already seeing DJs I know having to compromise their preferred way of playing because venues have bought Nexus 2 kit on launch. More on that in the Mixer review next week. So let's wrap up then part one of this two part video. I'm not gonna spend a long time on the conclusion because we'll do the system as a whole next time. As a model directly compared to the existing 2000 Nexus, the Nexus 2 of the CDJ is an improvement. Everything they've added, I'm glad that they've added. So the build quality is better, the sound quality is better, although not massively so because it was very good on the Nexus. The physical controls are all still there, but we've gained the touchscreen as well. So you have got now that QWERTY search and you've got a few extra options with the touchscreen, which you didn't have with the old one. Searching was a big you know, hold up for a lot of people on the earlier models and the QWERTY search is way better. We've retained not only all the existing physical controls, but we've got better physical controls. We've got the more hot cues on there and they're hot cues as well. They really are live, so you can just hit them and they work straight away. This is all good stuff. Um, the performance is not as mind-blowing as I'd hoped, to be honest. You know, it's pretty slow when it comes to loading up stuff with loads of cue points on it. That's a bit of a shame. You know, expect you expect after a few years of development 
that this thing would be massively outpacing the original Nexus, and it isn't. You know, I know there's a lot more information now that it's dealing with and loading, but yeah, I've kind of wanted it to be a bit faster than it is. It's, it's really not any faster than the original. Hopefully they can keep on working with that in firmware. I love the fact you can hook up the SP1, even though that needs a massive, uh, you know, rewrite to make that work in the correct way with this setup. I love the fact you can now do the Pro DJ Link over the USB port, so that just gives you an extra option to do. You plug in your laptop into the USB and use it with all the players, including if you've got a mixed setup with the original Nexus in there as well. So this is all good stuff, right? Nothing on here really is bad as far as I'm concerned. It's all nice upgrades. Is it worth the kind of cost if you've got the original Nexus players to sell those and then spend the extra to get the new Nexus 2s? That's a hard one. It's a kind of a difficult one, not something really I'd be rushing to do. Think of these as the iPhone 6S as opposed to the iPhone 6. You know, it's a nice set of upgrades. It's not a paradigm shift compared to the previous model. You know, if you're used to playing on the original Nexuses, um, these will definitely make you happy, but I don't think for many people they're gonna be significant enough improvements that it's worth the extra outlay to do the upgrade. We'll see over time. If they improve them with firmware and so on as well and keep that moving, then there might be reasons to do that. And of course, eventually your original players will kind of get worn and tired. And then you should naturally move to the Nexus 2s. You know, if you're buying brand new today, don't go hunting for original Nexus players, just buy the Nexus 2s because they are the logical next step. They are better than the Nexus, but not in a kind of world-changing, massively mind-blowing way. They're just a nice improvement. And that's you know, not damning with faint praise. These are really, really good players just not dramatically better than the original Nexus. That, that's all, you know, so there we go. Different story, a little bit with the mixer, no spoilers, but there's a lot more improvements on here, which I think are gonna get people a lot more excited. So we'll be talking about that in detail next week. The DJM 900 Nexus 2 comes under the microscope then. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon. <laughs>